Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to part two of my Mario Kart vs. Diddy Kong solo play series. And on the last episode, I think I made some pretty solid points and showed most of what Mario Kart had to offer for a single player experience. Let me show you what Diddy Kong Racing offers. And the big, big thing it has over Mario Kart Adventure Mode. Uh, we'll start over, I guess. Uh, we'll be in it. Although I think I deleted my old file for the channel to start a new file for the channel, but it's neither here nor there. Bro, we got cutscenes in Diddy Kong Racing. Squeaky Chair is excited. So there is a story to this game. I'm pretty sure it's all just in the manual. This is from a time when you'd buy the game, you'd read everything in the car on the way home, and it would tell you why you're doing what you're doing. But yeah, so basically Adventure Mode, uh, the island acts as a hub world. He's going to give you your first balloon, I think. Good luck. No, he's not. Okay. Oh, I just got to drive up and get it. All right, I see it. Yeah, so think of the balloons like uh, Jiggies in Banjo-Kazooie. So, like, that door had a one on it. I would need to get one balloon to start. And... One balloon opens up Agent Lake. Now, the racing is where, like, a big portion of why I think single player is better than Mario Kart 64. As you can see, there are balloons. Blue balloons are speed boosts. Red balloons are your uh, your missiles. Uh, yellow balloons are your shield. And then there's like a multicolored one where it's a magnet, but the magnet fucking sucks. So I don't ever get it. But they're in the same location on every single map. And then as you get more of the same color up to three, it increases the potency of that ability. So, I got a triple speed boost. The, uh, the missiles are just a straight shot, like a green shell in Mario Kart. If you get two, you get, uh, tracking, like a red shell. And then if you get three, it gives you, uh, ten rapid-fire missiles that will refill if you get another, uh, red balloon after that. I'm also pretty good at this game, too. And there are four races in every world, then you go fight the boss. Now, I know someone's screaming at me because I didn't get the key, so let's go back and get that. Now, what the key, there's a key hidden in a level... Or, hold on. I'm doing that thing where it's hard to talk and play video games. Uh, I think I get to, if I go to lobby, I get to keep the key. Yeah. So this opens up a bonus mini game for that world. And in every world, somewhere in one of those four races is a hidden key, some harder to find than others. But yeah, I figure... Oh, God damn it! So I can activate time trials. Not, not worried about that right now. But I figure we'll play the first uh, four levels, fight the boss, do the minigame, and then 
that'll be the episode. So this will be a little bit longer than Mario Kart. But there's more to this game. Yeah, so the green balloons act like uh, bananas in Mario Kart. Yeah, so there's the Heat Seeker. So, the downside here is you replace whatever item you have if you hit another balloon. Whereas Mario Kart, you can just drive right through that shit. Fuck. Yeah, that'll slow me down. Yeah, so like I can just rapid fire. And then... I will miss the balloon that I used to demonstrate. So, me personally, I very rarely use anything but the blue. Just because I personally find it more useful to stay ahead of the pack. We'll skip that. We don't need to see it twice. I want to show off another uh, vehicle type. Well, I think the final level here is uh, in a plane. Yeah, so this is the shield I was talking about. Where if someone bumps you while you're doing it, they'll kind of spin out a little bit. Now, the shield will buff by just having the effect last longer, the more you get. Yeah, so there's the buff shield. I don't remember if it can go to three or not. I very rarely ever do that. And I don't know this for sure, but I'm, I'm pretty sure the AI in adventure mode is just set to fucking easy. And then they get more difficult when you do, like, uh, the silver coin challenges, which I'll talk about uh, once we fight the boss. Because you can't do them until you beat him anyway. Uh, oh, wait, no, I can't do Hot Top Volcano yet. Huh. Alright, well, I guess we'll, uh, we'll show you this. The minigame. So they're different for each world. There's a total of four. I don't think... I could be wrong, but I don't remember the secret fifth world having one of these. So basically what you want to do here is you want to drive your plane into the egg, drive back to your nest, and hit the Z button to drop it. And then there's a little bit of a timer, as you can see months flashing, for it to hatch. Now, while it's blinking, other players can drive and steal that shit. As you can see, mine's been stolen. So, once the egg solidifies, like, stops flashing, you get a point. And it's the first person to three. And then, every like, they'll respawn down here every once in a while. Okay, see, I got a point. 
Okay, the way it looks is there can only be three in play. So once one hatches... Oh, he wasn't who I wanted to lock onto. But yeah, once they hatch, I'm imagining they go back down into the center. And that's, that's what it looks like. This game... Boring as hell. Uh, single player. I will not lie. But if you get four people playing this, ton of fun. And that goes with any of the uh, the mini games. Oh, you son of a! All right, go ahead and drop it. Oh shit! Oh, I got shitty. All right. Do I have time to steal it? Well, Tip top sure is fucked. Up. Oh nope, Diddy Kong's about to win. Not having that. Oh, am I gonna make it? Got it. Woo, that was close. Fuck, everyone's about to have two. This is going to be a fucking nasty fight. You son of a bitch. Fuck. Uh. Can't let him win. So what you get for all these when you're playing single player mode, you're getting pieces of the TT amulet. What does that do? I do not remember. Oh, he's going to steal mine. I might lose this one. Alright, tipped up stealing his. I'm gonna steal his. They stole mine. I've never had a game last this long. Alright, tipped up stealing that. Looks like I, I should be good. Got it. Woo! That definitely one of the more tense ones I've ever done. Yeah, there's the TT amulet. Alright, well... Let's go, uh, let's go find one of the hidden balloons. I was gonna say, there are four total, I got one. But we need the alternate vehicles. Hello, fresh. Select your vehicle. Abracadabra. Can I have a vehicle? And then there's one right up here, that's all I need. Yeah, I probably should have explored a little bit before coming in here, but hey, whatever. So this is a level I definitely uh, want the heat-seeking missiles, because it is almost fucking impossible to hit somebody with just a straight shot in a plane. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's the heat seeker. Do 
Fuck, I missed it. All right, one more lap. Can I? Oh, I wanted to see if I could do the the backflip over the banner. All right, we just have the boss. And there is more to the game other than what I've shown, but I think I did a poor job of making my point. If you're still here. Okay. And there's voice acting in a Nintendo 64 game. That's fucking wild, too. So basically, this boss, all I have to do is beat him up to the top of the mountain. It's a spiral. And then more and more bullshit will get in the way as we go. Now, I'm not going to lie, the, the, the boss races can get a little, uh, a little shitty. They're not my favorite part of the game. But it's cool they tried. The one I absolutely hate is the dragon plane shit you gotta do in World 3 or 4. I forget how it breaks down. I should be getting these boosts. There we go. No, stop it. Got it. So now I'll talk quickly about the Silver Coin Challenge, or I guess he'll explain it here, if you can hear him. Yeah, so I now have to go back through and do all four courses again. I don't, I don't know what that was about. But I now have to go back through and play these levels again. You know what, I'll show you one. Because what I really like about the Silver Coin Challenges is it forces you to play the race in a different way and get better at the driving. And you'll see what I'm talking about here and then we'll call it. Now, see, so you can choose to get them all in the first lap. You can divvy them up, get certain ones uh, at certain points in the race. And the hitboxes are pretty generous, as you can tell. This might not have been the best one to show off, like how it forces you to race a different path, but they're just trying to teach you about it. Usually, you're not going to get them all in the first lap. Yeah, I guess, I guess I'll wrap up uh, while I'm doing this. It's a regular race now. That's Diddy Kong Racing Solo. As you can see, it's a much deeper game in a solo experience. And they still have circuits that you unlock after beating the... Once you beat the boss a second time in each world, you unlock the ability to do circuits. And then that's a whole separate uh, collectible you can get for beating all those and coming in first. Yeah, I just... I don't, I think Mario Kart 64 is a little bit overrated compared to this game. Like, I'm not going to say this isn't a popular game on the console. But it's just a 
better game than Mario Kart 64. Mario Kart 64 is more of a party game with its random aspects and rubber banding AI. If you can pull ahead in Banjo-Kazooie, you can hold that lead and you really gotta fight to catch up. So it's a lot harder to get four people in this day and age who know what they're doing, who know the game well enough to know how to do the drifting, do all that other shit, right? But I'm droning on at this point. If, you, if you're still here, thank you. I, I feel like I say this every week, but hopefully Justin will be back. We can get back on the Dark Watch grind and do some other stuff. But uh, I'm Nathan with Nightcaps. Bye.